This is a prime lens and this is basically four prime lenses in one, but it's kind of worse in pretty much every way. But if you have zooms, I think one good way to treat them is to use them as if they are a set of primes with a couple of very important exceptions, but we'll get to that. In case you're unaware, prime lenses just have a single focal length, whereas zooms have a range that you can change between. Primes like this one compared to an equivalent zoom are generally sharper, can go to a wider aperture and have less optical imperfections. Unless you're into that, then in that case, there's a lot of primes with character. But one of the things that people talk about with primes is they kind of force creativity in a way because you can't just stand in the same spot and zoom in and out to get different versions of the same shot. With a prime, you have to either move the camera, move the subject, or even change the lens entirely to get a different shot. And this goes for both photo and video, by the way. The benefits of zooms are generally the versatility and the ability to zoom out and back in, basically as another type of camera movement. In most cases, if you have a zoom lens, I would recommend treating it like a set of primes. For example, a 24-70 f2.8 is basically a 24, 35, 50, and 70 mil prime all at 2.8. The actual numbers themselves don't matter. There's no reason you can't shoot at 28, 63, or 42 millimeters. But if you pick one and use it as if it were a prime, you get the same effect on force and creativity when it comes to positioning and composition, rather than standing in the same spot and just zooming in and out to get different versions of the exact same shot. By doing this, you're more likely to have greater variety in your shots and compositions, and also have the convenience of not having to change lenses, which can be very beneficial in time sensitive shoots where you just straight up don't have time to change lenses. And now for the part where zooms really shine, zooming. And I don't mean between shots, I mean treating the zoom ring as you would a gimbal or a dolly, basically a way to influence the story with a camera movement, or in this case, movement of the glass inside the lens. Back in December, I did a shoot for Flashback where we were going for a bit of a retro comedic sort of vibe. And the BTS video that I posted about that kind of went a little bit viral on TikTok and Instagram. And like so many people commented, too many people commented on those videos that you can do this sort of stuff in post, crash zooms and whatnot, but it just doesn't feel the same. So I generally always would try to do things in camera. Zooming in and out can be a good retention tool for keeping things interesting if you're just talking to the camera like this without much B-roll or anything like that. So it's pretty common in vlog style content. It's also pretty common in documentary style content because on shoots like that, you generally need the versatility of a zoom lens. Even think of shows like The Office, which use that handheld doc style camera movement, which included zoom ins and outs. Now I'm not saying that zooms are better than primes, I actually prefer primes in most cases, and in most ways, they are generally better, assuming they're equivalent sort of price levels. But if you're like a lot of people and you use zoom lenses a lot, try using them a bit more like a prime, except when you need to zoom, of course. But that's all for this one. If you like lenses, go watch my previous video about what focal length you should use for YouTube. And do all the other things. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.